Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. One announcement I forgot to make, uh, just a reminder, the worship committee meets this afternoon at 3 o'clock to uh, finalize uh, its part of the directory. So please keep that in mind, those of you in the worship committee. Let's pray. Lord, so open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, that when you call us, we can be ready to go. And that when you call us to go, we go wherever you are willing to send us. That we can learn to set, a lot, set aside our expectations, our preconceptions, our biases, our prejudices, and just simply go. Now, Lord, gather us around your word. Help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to serve you. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Good friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, unless you were on a cruise in the very depths of the Amazon jungle in the last two to three days, you probably all have heard what our president said in a meeting last week. I was disappointed in that because I expect better out of those in the presidential office, but the thing that really disappointed me was the, the schoolyard joy that most of the announcers were seeming to get out of repeating the phrase. You know how it is when little boys hear a dirty word for the first time, they can't stop saying it? Well, that's kind of how I felt after about 20 minutes of news the other morning. It's like I'm listening to a bunch of school children repeating a dirty word they just discovered. It did nobody any good. It was embarrassing. And it certainly was not within the realm of Christianity or of Christian behavior, as Paul writes in his lesson this morning. But I want to read another passage from an Old Testament book for you this morning. This is from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. What does it gain a man by his toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. And there is nothing new under the sun. Philip went to Nathanael after he had encountered Jesus and Jesus had called him, and Nathanael's response to Philip was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's kind of the way we felt about Radcliffe when I was in high school. We probably felt that way because the fall before they had beaten us 69 to nothing at football, but we felt that nothing good can come out of that town that was only 7 or 13 miles to the west of us because we knew what those people were like. Nathaniel already had it in his head that there was nothing valuable that would come out of Nazareth. Nothing at all. 
And instead of arguing with him and trying to convince him that he was wrong, that he was short-sighted, that he was, yes, to use a nasty word, bigoted, Philip simply said what Jesus had said to him, follow me, come and see. Encountering someone, especially if they are from a different culture, a different race, a different place, a different mindset, can be a very awakening experience. Because we all grow up with the assumption that where we were born, where we have lived, the people that we associate with, the government we live under, the political and economic system that is ours, we all make the assumption that ours is the best that there ever has been. And that no place else in the world can be any better than us. And in fact, some places aren't even worth the time of day. Some people aren't even worth our attention. But we forget what it says in the book of Genesis. That the human race was created in the image of God. All people are created in the image of God. Not just the ones we like, not just the ones who look and think like us, not just the ones who are from Jewel, Iowa, or Garnavillo, Iowa, or El Cater, or Guttenberg, or Iowa in general, but all people are created in the image of God. And not only are all people created in the image of God, but as John will say later in his gospel from the lips of Jesus, God so loved the world, so loved all those people of the world that he gave his only son so that the world might be redeemed through him. Not just those we agree with, not just the Lutherans who happen to have good and right theology. Not just American Christians because they live in America. But everyone who names the name of Jesus, who has heard the good news of the death and resurrection of Jesus, is someone for whom Christ has died and called out of the darkness of sin and death into the glorious light of his salvation. Whether they be Norwegian, or German, or African American, or Palestinian, or Chinese, or Russian, or any other corner of the world. All who name the name of Jesus are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that doesn't leave those who haven't heard the name of Jesus or who haven't claimed him as savior out of the dark, out of our love and our compassion. Because what does our Lord teach us in Matthew 28? He sends us into the whole world with the gospel to proclaim the dying and the rising of Jesus to anyone who will listen so that the world might hear of the love of God that is theirs in the dying and the rising of Jesus. We live in a time in which it has become acceptable and fashionable and perfectly all right to say all kinds of ridiculous and vulgar things about one another. We can print it on social media, our news is infected with it. We can't seem to relate to one another in any other way than in name calling and in misunderstanding and in vitriol. And I'm here to tell you that all of that is first, middle, and last a work of the devil. And anyone who thinks that it's okay to participate in that, to demean and defame 
and to ridicule and to shame anyone created in the image of God for whom Christ has suffered and died. Is hand in hand seeking the end goals of the evil one. We are tearing ourselves apart because we, like Nathaniel, say to ourselves, can anything good come out of anywhere that I don't know about? Can anything good come out of any group that I don't understand? Can anything good come out of another human being with whom I happen to disagree? And the answer ought not to be no, but the answer as Christians must be come and see. Because if we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, if we believe that Jesus Christ has died for our sins and been raised for our justification and refuse to believe that he's died and been raised for someone else's sins and someone else's justification, then we are denying him ourselves. And we are serving the will and the purpose of the devil. It's that simple. And we need to stop it now. Luther, in his explanation to the Eighth Commandment, said that we are to try and explain and understand our neighbor's words and actions in the kindest possible way. Instead of looking at them and trying to find reasons to denigrate and to run them down, to ask ourselves what is going on in their life? What are they struggling with? What challenges face them that they act and think in this way? What brokenness lies in their heart that has yet to be healed by the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ? And then to simply say to them, come and see the Savior who has forgiven me. Because your forgiveness, my forgiveness, your salvation, my salvation is a miracle of God. That God would look upon me as the sinner that I am and see me with the clarity that only God could see and say to me, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, you are forgiven and your sins are no more. How can I then say there is anyone, anyone, who is outside of that same love and mercy and not reject it for myself. In a little while, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. We're going to pray, Lord, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That's not simply a pretty phrase that Jesus inserted into the Lord's Prayer. Jesus is asking us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Jesus is asking us to look upon each other human being that we encounter as someone whom he has died for and whom the Father loves. We cannot continue on in this world on the path that we have set for ourselves. We will literally tear ourselves apart as a nation. We cannot go down that path because all it leads to is brokenness and sorrow and tragedy. You and I, like Philip and Nathaniel and all the other disciples, have been called to follow Jesus and to see through the eyes of Jesus each and every one worthy of his going to the cross. We are called to live out the love of God that we ourselves have received even for the most unlovely person we might encounter. And that will not be easy because we can all think of someone or some group that we just can't bring ourselves to love and yet Jesus calls upon us to love them as he does. 
We won't end the bitterness and the strife among human beings. We won't bring wars to an end by ourselves, but it has to begin somewhere. And if it can't begin within the church, within the body of Christ, among those who are forgiven by the dying and the rising of Jesus, who have the love of God poured out upon them day by day, then where will it begin? Jesus bids us to follow him. And he gives us the simplest of messages to those we encounter who ask, can anything good come out of God? Come and see. Come and see the place where sinners are forgiven. Come and see where differences can be reconciled. Come and see where those who were once enemies with one another can now embrace one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Come and see where the world's hope lies because it lies in no other place than in the dying and the rising of Jesus, in the living and risen Christ. The hope of the world, the whole world, is in Christ's church. And we are to invite them to come and see the Savior who loves us and who loves them. Come and see.